Good evening. I'm delighted to welcome you to our event this evening, hosted in collaboration with Industry, the SQA and Young Scott, to provide parents and young people, particularly school and college leavers, with relevant insight and information on topics that are of interest to you right now. It's great that so many of you from right across the country have been able to tune in to this event from your homes. This is the first session of a wider Scotland's Biggest Parents Evening series that will run throughout summer as a support mechanism for parents and young people at what is undoubtedly a particularly challenging time. We acknowledge that the various impacts of the current situation faced by all of us will be affecting everybody in different ways. But at today's broadcast and over the course of the next few months, we aim to provide you with some insight and reassurance about the possible options for young people as they leave school and take their next steps. We have been planning these events for quite some time now with the full support of the First Minister and we are delighted to welcome everybody today. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Rob Woodward. I'm the chair of the DYW National Employers Forum and the former chief executive of STV. I also chair Glasgow Caledonian University as well as the UK's Met Office. I'm going to be your host for this evening. Let me say a couple of words about DYW. It was established in 2014 in order to improve the prospects for Scotland's young people, reduce youth unemployment and improve the links between employers, schools and young people. I have been involved since the beginning and we've made great progress with DYW groups now active in every corner of the country. Employers wanted to have improved direct access to young people and that's exactly what DYW is here to do. But clearly, the impact of COVID-19 and the expected downturn in the economy will add to the challenges. DYW is here for you, and we have moved quickly to establish DYW Online, enabling us to continue to connect young people, schools and employers, even though our schools have been closed since March. Before we get started, I wanted to touch on some points about the overall format for this evening's event. The, the session is scheduled to last approximately 30 minutes, and you're going to hear from a range of experts throughout the broadcast. As the event is a broadcast, there isn't going to be an opportunity for live Q&A with our panel. However, I encourage you to send comments and questions, and the plan is that these will be moderated and collated with a view to us running a specific Q&A session to answer any of your questions at the event at the end of the event series. So now to an overview of this evening's session, which is the first in the series. Tonight's event will help to raise awareness of the priority sectors and job roles which could present opportunities for young people transitioning out of school and looking for the first step on their career ladder. You will hear from various employer representatives about the types of key worker roles that are keeping the nation going, and we hope that this inspires you and your young people to consider these pathways, if you haven't already done so. We understand the impact of the pandemic on education and on exams in particular. We're sure that many of you have wondered how the exam assessment process will impact you, which is why we felt it important to enlist the support of the Scottish Qualifications Authority, or the SQA as it's better known, to provide an overview of the exam assessment process, including an update on foundation apprenticeships. Another concern for many of us is the mental health impact caused by the current situation and the associated uncertainty about the future. We're delighted that Louise MacDonald, Chief Executive of Young Scott, has taken the time to join us this evening to provide some reassurance for young people that it's okay not to be okay. Louise will be able to help you to where you can go for more support in relation to mental health and well-being. Finally, as an industry-led network of regional groups whose aim is to connect young people with employers, we wanted to ensure that you heard from an industry representative. We're delighted that Craig Martin from the CNC Group, 
a leading manufacturer of premium branded drinks, including Tenants, Magnus and Bulmers, is here to enlighten you as to the various ways in which skills can be developed through the many pathways that are available to help you achieve your ultimate career destination. We hope this event will provide you not only with some food for thought, but also with some clear advice and guidance about the various types of support that are available to young people and their parents in these unusual times. On that note, I'd like to introduce the first part of our event, where you will hear from employers across a range of priority sectors, including health, digital services, retail, and logistics. I hope this provides some inspiration into the range of career paths that are in demand right now. Hi, my name's Amy, and I'm a technology apprentice at Sky. Not to be cliche, but technology is the future. We are surrounded by it. TikTok, gaming, YouTube, Netflix, we use them every day. So now more than ever, it's a time to be involved in technology. Technology really was my calling and ideally I wanted to work at Sky. I didn't know how to do that though, as I had no qualifications and no technical work experience until I stumbled upon their apprenticeship program, which proved as long as you have a passion for technology and a willingness to learn, they'll pull you in. And I'm now a technology apprentice in the infrastructure department. It's a great place to work. The perks are amazing. On my first day of the apprenticeship, they flew me down to London to see the Sky campus. And that's where Sky Sports and Sky News are filmed out of. You also get free Skies, movie, sports, anything you want. Plus, Sky is also owned by Comcast, who own Universal, which means you get free friends and family passes to Universal Theme Park in Orlando. Can't wait to go over there and enjoy that. I'm Charles Hammond. I'm the Group Chief Executive of Fourth Ports Limited. I wish you well in the start of your career. And please be aware there are many exciting opportunities within our business. I started with Fourth Ports about seven and a half years ago as VTS, which is an operator level position. Since then, I've worked my way through various different positions within the Marine Department. There's a lot of support and, and encouragement to, as I say, put yourself out there and, and, and develop. Um, and the, when the roles become available, there certainly is an opportunity for you to apply and you're encouraged to, to put yourself forward for the roles. Fourth Ports have a development programme in place for the Marine team, which I followed. So I went from VTS through to Marine Officer, Assistant Harbour Master, Deputy Marine Manager, and then on to the role of Harbour Master. My name's Louise. I'm a Trade and Support Manager for Argos. I'm 24 years old from Kirkcaldy, and I've been with the business for about six and a half years. I've learned so many new skills since starting as a customer advisor at weekends. Progression in this company is encouraged, and there are many learning tools and programmes available. I've completed Argos's development programme which was called Retail Academy 1. This supported me in developing the correct behaviours to ensure that I became such a strong le leader. My career goal is to become a successful trading manager in one of our successful hubs and then on to become a store manager. My advice to anyone considering this industry and their future career would be that in retail, it's constantly changing, so you need to be able to adapt to that change very quickly. You'll meet so many new people and you'll learn so many new skills for life. You'll have new learnings every day with many different options and avenues to progress in this company. NHS Scotland has almost 170,000 staff and we serve a population of almost 5.5 million people. We are the largest employer in Scotland. Just over half of our staff are clinically qualified. But did you know that just under half support those clinical roles and also provide critical and crucial support to our infrastructure? Skills come from many experiences in life, not just those that you pick up at school or college. We may be in unprecedented times, the NHS may be facing some of the biggest challenges that healthcare has ever seen. But this also means that there is great opportunity to join the NHS at a time when you can really make a difference.
I hope you agree that it was fantastic to hear from such a wide range of employers who are working in critical sectors of our economy. What you have just seen was designed to give you a flavour of the range of industries that are more likely to be recruiting at this time, and I would encourage you to explore the opportunities that may be available as young people decide their next steps. I'm now going to move on and introduce our next speaker for this evening. I'm delighted that Alistair McRae, Head of Business Development and Customer Support for the Scottish Qualifications Authority, the SQA, has been able to join us for this evening. The SQA sits at the heart of our education system and is an organisation with two main roles, firstly accreditation and secondly awarding qualifications. Alistair is going to provide an update on the exam assessment process, which I'm sure is something that you all want to hear more about. So over to you, Alistair, and welcome to this evening's event. Thank you, Rob. I'm delighted to be able to support this event on behalf of the SQA and I hope the information I'm about to supply is useful for everybody listening in. Now, with this year's exams being cancelled and schools and colleges closed, we realise that 2020 has been and continues to be a very challenging and worrying time for all learners, parents and carers. So following the latest public health advice, SQA is basing its decision this year on three principles. Fairness to all learners, safe and secure certification of your child's qualifications, and making sure that the qualifications your child achieves this year are equal to any achieved in the past or in the future. For those of you whose children were due to sit National 5 Higher Advanced Higher exams this year, we've been working on an alternative way to ensure your child's hard work is fully recognised through our qualification system. We've been working closely with schools, colleges, where teachers and lecturers from across the whole of Scotland have provided over half a million estimates. These grades have been based on the wide range of work that your child has done in class, as well as the teacher or lecturer's professional judgement. This data will allow us to look at the reasons behind any apparent changes in the pattern of attainment in comparison with previous years that are reflected in the estimates submitted by schools and colleges. We are also working with subject specialists to check the data from across the whole of Scotland to ensure the results your child receives on Tuesday the 4th of August are fair. I would encourage your child to sign up to my SQA if possible so that they receive the results by text and or email as well as by post. Now, many of our learners are studying SQA qualifications that don't have an end of year exam. These qualifications include higher national, national certificates, national progression awards and freestanding units. We ask teachers and lecturers to use their, their teaching knowledge as well as the work that your child has already completed to make a professional judgement on whether your child was likely to achieve their qualification. We work very closely with College of Scotland to support lecturers in using their professional judgement in making assessment decisions based on your child's progress and achievements. If your child is concerned with the results they receive, they must first speak to their school or college. We will have a free appeal service available for those who are due to sit National 5, Higher or Advanced Higher exams and whose results were lower than the estimated grade submitted to us. This service will enable your child's school or college to request a review of the grade. As we do every year, we will give priority to requests regarding those learners needing a result to secure a conditional place at college or university. And some of you have been in touch with us about uh, your child's foundation apprenticeships. As this qualification is a blend of classroom and workplace learning, the COVID-19 restrictions on work placements have impacted on completing the work-based elements as well as the associated assessments. We've worked in partnership with Colleges Scotland, Skills Development Scotland and University Scotland to find the best solution possible for those doing a foundation apprenticeship. Learners who have completed and passed all elements will receive a Foundation Apprenticeship Certificate as normal. Learners who passed the National Progression Award or National Certificate Element by the 15th of July this year or who have no fails recorded against any of the units will receive a certificate for the qualifications they have achieved. They will also receive a letter of recognition which can be used for entry requirements for college and university courses. Any learners who have not achieved the National Certificate or National Progression Award or who have fails will receive a certificate for the elements that they have passed but will not receive a certificate or letter of recognition for the Foundation Apprenticeship. Everyone at SQA remains committed to delivering your child's results in a fair way, allowing them to progress to further learning or work. We all want to ensure the class of 2020 can hold their heads high now and in the future with their qualifications fully recognised as would be in any year. We continue to provide support and resources on our website that are dedicated to parents, carers and learners, as well as teachers and lecturers. We are also working with national bodies such as the National Parent Forum for Scotland, Connect, Young Scot and the Scottish Youth Parliament to share information on what is happening and when. If you have any questions relating to your child's 2020 qualifications, please visit www.sqa.org.uk forward slash 2020 qualifications 
or www.sqa.org.uk forward slash 2020 FAQs. Thank you for listening. I'll pass you back to Rob. Thank you, Alistair, for that insightful update. It's good to hear about the developments that the SQA is making during this unprecedented time. I hope you found the update useful and now know where you and your family can go for information and support. Moving on, it's my great pleasure to introduce you to our next speaker, Louise MacDonald, Chief Executive of Young Scott. Many of you will be aware that Young Scott is Scotland's National Youth Information Service. In partnership with the Scottish Youth Parliament and Youth Link Scotland, Young Scott recently commissioned the Lockdown Lowdown Report, a survey of 2,500 young people across Scotland in relation to their feelings about the pandemic. Louise is here to share with you some of the key findings and to highlight some of the support mechanisms available to young people at this time. A very warm welcome to you, Louise. Hi everybody, I hope you're doing okay today. My name is Louise MacDonald and I'm the Chief Executive at Young Scott. And for those of you that don't know, Young Scott is a national youth information and citizenship charity supporting young people aged 11 to 26 in communities across Scotland. Now, shortly after the start of lockdown because of COVID-19, we quickly realised that young people were going to be one of the most affected groups by this pandemic. Overnight, everyone had to stay at home and avoid school or places where they go to learn. We also heard from lots of young people that they had to take time off their schoolwork due to illness, self-isolation, or because they were caring for those that they love. For many young people, closing schools meant that they couldn't sit their exams and that cast doubt over their next planned steps and transitions. So we wanted to find out more about how young people were feeling about lockdown. So we partnered with our friends at the Scottish Youth Parliament and Youth Link Scotland, and together we launched Lockdown Lowdown Survey in April. And we asked young people from all communities in Scotland to share their concerns about COVID-19 and the impact it was having on their lives. We launched this survey as we wanted to share the thoughts and feelings of young people with stakeholders who could use the information to plan policies or make decisions or plan services in response to the pandemic. These stakeholders included the Scottish Government, NHS Scotland, local authorities, a whole range of other partners. And nearly two and a half thousand young people took part in the survey and the results really helped us to find out more about how young people are feeling. So we're so grateful that you were one of those young people that took part. Some of the most interesting results included around half of young people said they were concerned about exams and coursework, two thirds that they were concerned about the impact of COVID-19 on their future. And so many said that decision makers should improve the impact on education and some wanted restrictions and lockdown to be even tighter to secure safety of those that they loved. Some of the most concerning results were around mental health though, with over 75% of young people telling us that they worried about their mental well-being. And what's also interesting is that older young people were more concerned about their mental well-being than younger people with 63% of respondents over 18 years of age telling us that they were moderately or extremely concerned. And two fifths of respondents also said to us that they didn't know where to go to access information regarding support for mental health and wellbeing. Since then, we've been encouraging young people to keep submitting their questions and concerns on a weekly poll on our Young Scott Instagram account. And this is helping us to track key issues and we're producing digital youth information to help young people in response to this. Also, thanks to Scottish Government support, we recently launched I Feel, A-Y-E Feel, a dedicated emotional wellbeing site hosted on young.scot. This site has information and resources which help you to understand that it's perfectly normal to be dealing with anxiety, fear, uncertainty, anger or sadness 
during such difficult circumstances. And this site has quality assured information, expert advice, content made by young people for young people and links to places to find emotional support. It also includes information on how things like sleeping better, managing stress, productive ways to spend time online and coping with conflict can all help. We've worked with Sleep Scotland, for instance, and created tips for sleeping well. Sleep is always important for our emotional well-being, but it's hard right now to stick to a routine. Young people on our Young Scot and Sports Scotland sports panel have also created great Instagram content on ways to stay active during lockdown and how to use sport and physical activity to improve your emotional well-being. It's fascinating stuff, so please do take a look at that. Also, if you or one of your friends needs a bit of emotional support, it's always good to know who to turn to. And it's so important to talk to someone and get more help and let them know how you're feeling. This could be someone in your family, another friend, your GP, or by calling a helpline. So the I Feel section on young.scot has lots of information on who you can contact, whether that's by phone, email, or message. The most important thing though is that you do reach out and talk to someone and then take up the offer of help that's given. So do take a look at young.scot to find out more about everything that I've talked about today. You can also follow us on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok and YouTube. We're on all of them and we'd love to see you there. Thanks so much for listening today. Take care. Thank you, Louise, for sharing those valuable insights with us. And I hope that you can make use of some of the information sources that Louise referred to. We're now going to move on to our final speaker for this evening, Craig Martin. Craig is the head of HR operations at the CNC Group, which you may know better as the manufacturers and distributors of premium drinks such as Tenants, Boomers and Magnas. Craig is an industry leader and expert in human resources. We're also fortunate that he dedicates his time to chairing the DYW Group in Glasgow. Craig is here to share his insight into the ways in which young people can prepare for their future. Over to you, Craig. Clearly, it's been a really difficult time for both uh, pupils uh, and parents um, due to these challenging conditions uh, brought about by the, the COVID crisis, um, particularly those pupils who are in senior phase of school. Um, they've had exams cancelled, um, a lot of nervousness uh, about the economic situation. Uh, parents as well have had a lot of pressure. Um, a lot of them have had to engage in homeschooling uh, and clearly any, any parent has got um, their deep concerns about uh, the future prospects for um, their, their children as either enter into further education, uh, higher education or indeed the, the job market. Um, what I wanted to do today was just really to share with you um, some benefits of um, a career in HR uh, and particularly with regard to employability. Uh, been involved in a lot of recruitment over the years, particularly of uh, young, young people entering the job market. And through that time, um, hopefully built up a lot of skills and knowledge in terms of what uh, employers look for. Um, and what I want to be able to do is to try and give you guys as parents um, now some skills, some takeaways today um, that you can share with your, your children and to hopefully give them a competitive advantage as they enter into this um, tricky, challenging job market. Um, it's, it's clear that we're about to enter into sort of tougher times. Um, in Scotland, we've came from a situation of um, record employment, um, which is a really good thing, uh, into um, a, a sort of sharp downturn. If you look at the economic forecasts, um, that is predicted to, to be the case. Um, when you, when you enter a recession, the conventional wisdom is always to stay in education longer. And I know a lot of your parents will be um, having those discussions uh, with your children. Um, but there'll be also um, some uh, children who want to go on with their careers and enter the world of work. Um, so both are, are good options. And it's important that for those choosing the latter, uh, give themselves every fighting chance of landing one of those opportunities. Because there'll still be opportunities in there, out there. They'll be a bit more limited than there has been over the last few years, um, but there are a lot of sectors still buoyant and still recruiting. 
Um, so it's important that I um, share with you some of these, sort of almost like an insider's guide, um, so you can take advantage of that. And we look to try and hire people who have passion, enthusiasm, and a positive attitude. Um, that's a particular bugbear of mine. Uh, I want to be surrounded by people with those traits. And if you flip it on the other side, now why would you want to work with someone who's lacking in passion, lacking in enthusiasm, and has got a negative attitude? You just don't want to be around these people. So um, now just please encourage um, your children who are going for, for jobs, it could be their first job, their first interview, to, to make sure that comes across. Because again, that's a real standout uh, feature in the hiring process. The other key uh, aspect is all about uh, customer service. Um, everyone's got a customer. Sometimes it's less obvious in other businesses than perhaps retail and hospitality. But you have to develop that customer service mentality. Um, it's a vital skill to have. And it's one which you can easily gain through um, part-time employment or, or volunteering. Now, lastly, I do want to talk about um, collaboration. Um, now, we used to call it teamwork. It's virtually the same thing. But it's that whole society uh, is embracing it a lot more these days. But certainly in the workplace, um, you have to be willing to co collaborate, both in, in terms of sharing your ideas um, and your thoughts, but also being receptive to other people's ideas and thoughts. So where do you get these skills? Um, the good thing, a lot of them uh, is based around attitude. So it um, doesn't cost uh, any money to get. It's all about having the right mindset. There's other things you can do. Um, volunteering, uh, I've mentioned that previously. That's something which uh, employers look for uh, in a CV. It demonstrates um, now willingness and helping others uh, and can be a standout feature in a CV. And also it gives you something to, to speak to and relate to during an interview. And also part-time employment um, is going to be a little bit trickier now with the changes uh, in the job market. Um, however, again, that's a, a great, uh, we always look for, for, for um, people who have when out there, sought out part-time employment. They quite often develop a, a, the, the skill sets we're looking for in terms of collaboration and customer service skills. So again, that's something which I would encourage you to do as parents is to um, get your children out there to try and secure part-time employment. So um, but that's all I have to say. Um, I appreciate it's a, a really tough situation out there just now, um, but things get better and hopefully they'll get better uh, fairly soon. Um, there is always opportunities for people with the right attitude. Uh, that's been my experience. Um, I've had the benefit or the, the challenge of working through a couple of real um, difficult uh, economic situations and we always go out the other side. Um, so it's a question of getting to it with the right attitude uh, and hopefully some of this um, hints and advice will help um, you be able to pass on to your children to help them um, approach a challenging situation. Thank you. Thank you, Craig, for what was a very positive outlook on skills development and pathways. In fact, it's now time to extend my thanks once again to all of our speakers for the insights which they have given you, which I hope that the viewers at home have found useful. It's been great to hear from such a range of speakers, and I really hope that you've found the messages this evening helpful, particularly for those of you who are just leaving school or college and preparing to start your career. I wanted to finish off by highlighting that you can now go onto our national website, dyw.scot, for further information and resources. Here you will find information about our DYW Skills Academy, which we are delighted to announce. This is a fantastic package of support developed by the DYW Network in partnership with employers, designed to support school leavers to get industry ready. It offers skills sessions, e-learning, CV support, and more. You'll find out more information at dyws.scot, and I encourage all young people, and particularly school and college leavers, to sign up for these sessions. As I referenced at the beginning of the event, this session was the first of several in a series, and I would encourage everybody who took the time to participate in today's session to sign up for the other events in the series. The next one is going to take place on Tuesday, the 21st of July at 7 p.m. More information about how to sign up is also available on our National DYW Scotland website. Finally, I would like to extend a huge thank you to you, our audience at home, who have taken the time to join our session this evening. I look forward to seeing you again 
and join us at a future event. Look after yourselves and remember that DYW and all of the organisations that you've seen represented this evening are here to help you. Good night and see you again soon.